a in a market to the rest of the nations all around. Therefore, therefore, where I'm at. Fourteen. Hello. Five. I'm on five. Okay, oh. therefore, thus said the Master Yahuwah, have I not spoken in my burning jealousy against the rest of the nations and against all Edom who gave my land to themselves as a possession with all joy of heart, with scorn in their being to drive it out for a prey? Therefore prophesy concerning the land of Yashrael. And you shall say to the mountains and to the hills, to rivers and to valleys. Thus says the master Yahuwah. See, I have spoken in my jealousy and my wrath because you have borne the shame of the nations. Therefore, thus said the master Yahuwah, I have lifted my hand in an oath that the nations that are around you shall bear their own shame. But you, O mountains of Yashriel, put forth your branches and bear your fruit to my people, Yashriel, for they are about to come. Oh, hallelujah. For look, I am for you, and I shall turn to you, and you shall be killed and sown, and I shall increase men upon you, all the house of Yashriel, all of it. And the city shall be inhabited, and the ruins rebuilt, and I shall increase upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bear young. And I shall make you inhabited as of old and to do better for you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah. And I shall let men, my people, Yashriel, walk upon you and let them possess you. And you shall be their inheritance and no longer let you add to their bereavement. Thus said the master Yahuwah, because they say to you, you devour men and have bereaved your nation. Therefore, you shall no longer devour men and no longer bereave your nation, declares the master Yahuwah. And no longer shall I let you hear the insults of the nations and the reproach and the reproach of the peoples you shall bear no more and no longer cause your nations to stumble, declares the master Yahuwah. And the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own ways and deeds. To me, their way was like the uncleanliness of a woman in her monthly period. So I poured out my wrath on them for the blood they had shed on the land and for their idols, they defiled it. And I scattered them among the nations. And they were dispersed throughout the lands. I have judged them according to their ways and their deeds. And when they came to the nations, wherever they went, they profaned my set-apart name. For it was said of them, these are the people of Yahuwah. And yet they have gone out of his land. 
but I had compassion on my set apart name, which the house of Israel have profaned among the nations, wherever they went. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus saith the master Yahuwah, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Yashrael, but for my set apart name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations, wherever you went. And I shall set apart my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am Yahuwah, declares the master Yahuwah. When I am set apart in you before their eyes, and I shall take you from among the nations, and I shall gather you out of all lands, and I shall bring you into your own land, and I shall sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I cleanse you, and I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I shall take the heart of stone out of your flesh, and I shall give you a heart of flesh and put my spirit within you, and I shall cause you to walk in my laws and guard my right rulings, in other words, judgments and shall do them, and you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I shall be your Elohim, and I shall save you from all your uncleanliness, and I shall call for the grain and increase it, and I shall bring no scarcity of food upon you, and I shall increase the fruit of your trees and the increase of your field, so that you need never again hear the reproach of scarcity of food among the nations. And you shall remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good, and you shall loathe yourselves in your own eyes for your crookedness and your abomination. Not for your sake am I acting, declares the master Yahuwah. Let it be known to you. Be ashamed and blush for your ways, O house of Yashriel. Thus said the master Yahuwah on the crookedness. I shall cause the cities to be inhabited and ruined places shall be rebuilt and the land that was laid waste till instead of being a ruin before the eyes of all who pass by. Read they, verse 33 again, Elder. Read verse 33 again. Thus said the Master Yahuwah, on that day, we know what that day is, that I cleanse you from all your crookedness, I shall cause the cities to be inhabited and the ruined places shall be rebuilt and the land that was laid waste till instead of being a ruin before the eyes of all who pass by and they shall say this land was laid waste has become like the garden of eden and the wasted the deserted and the destroyed cities are now walled and inhabited then the nations which are left all around you shall know that I, Yahuwah, have rebuilt and destroyed places and planted what was laid waste. I, Yahuwah, have spoken it, and I shall do it. Thus said the master Yahuwah, once again, I shall let the house of Yashriel inquire of me to do for them. I shall increase their men like a flock, as a set-apart flock, as the flock, 
at Yerushalayim at her appointed times. So shall the wasted cities be built with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Abba, for letting me read your faithful word. Amen. Praise Yahuwah. Yes, indeed. Praise Yahuwah. What a powerful message. And uh, <clears throat> let's just get into this. This is, you know, I, I titled this the, um, the Day of Yahuwah Part Four. There's there the the day of Yahuwah could probably go on a series, many 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 more. Um, at some point, I'm going to stop that series. However, this is amazing when you really look at what Yahuwah is doing and will do for His people. It just it it ceases to amaze you. You have to stop and just lift up your hands and just say, praise Yahuwah, most high. You're going to do this for such a, a people that have, have been trodden down, have been disobedient. You're going to change the way that they um, approach living. You're, you're going to give them a new heart a new spirit, a new attitude towards life so that as the scripture says, uh, and I, I like the, the passage, this shows you that the, the context of this, this scripture reading in verse 30, it says, and I shall increase the fruit of your trees and the, and the increase of your fields so that you need never again. Did you hear that? Never again. Bear the reproach of scarcity of food among the nations. Here we are in, a, in, a, in 2023, okay? Many are, are bearing the reproach of scarcity of food. Many are looking, you know, wh where's my where's my next plate going to come from? Okay, but Yahuwah says those who put their trust in him will never, never again have to face that question. Never again. Praise Yahuwah. So um, our study today is... Ezekiel 37, and I'd like for you to turn with me. This is a really powerful message. This is a, a message of not just hope, but it really sets the stage. It sets the stage for the next couple of chapters, okay? It sets the stage for the very end of times. And we really need to embrace this as a people who have been despised and rejected of men, who have been cast down, because our hope, our power, our strength, our wisdom is in following the instructions of Yahuwah. There's no other, no other way then we are going to be able to face the challenges of that final generation unless we follow the instructions that are right here in Ezekiel 37. So let's get right into this. This is, as I mentioned, this, this is a, a prophetic parable. It's filled with, uh, with symbolic imagery. And that's part of the reason why I'd like to go over it uh, so that we can get the practical sense of what Yahuwah, the word of Yahuwah, is seeking to communicate to us. So 
Um, feel free to turn with me. I'm on page 568 in the scripture book. And let's go. It says, the hand of Yahuwah was upon me and took me out of the, out by the spirit of Yahuwah and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was filled with bones. Hmm. And he made me pass among them all around and see there were very many on the surface of the valley and see they were very dry. So being that they were very dry implies that there was no what in them. Anyone can say there was no life. That's right. No life. Very dry. No life. They were empty of that breath of life. Therefore, they were inactive. That's why they're just laying there on the ground. And he said to me, son of man, would these bones live? And I said, oh, Master Yahuwah, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones, and you shall say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of Yahuwah. Thus said the master Yahuwah to these bones. See, I am bringing into you a spirit and you shall live. Wow. So Yahuwah tells Ezekiel to prophesy to these dry bones. That they might live. Hmm. What are these, what are these dry bones? Let's continue. Verse 6. And I shall put sinews, verse, I'm going to read verse 5 again. Thus said the master Yahuwah to these bones, see, I am bringing into you a spirit, and you shall live. And I shall put sinews on you, and bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put a spirit in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah. And I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and there was a rattling. And the bones came together bone to bone. And I looked and saw sinews and flesh came upon them and skin covered them. But there was no spirit in them. This is interesting, what Yahuwah does here. And he already stated to, to Ezekiel that he would bring life to them. But he, Ezekiel prophesies, and the bones come together, ligaments, tendons, skin, muscle, fills these bones, but there's no life. See, Yahuwah is showing us that there's a process. There is a procedure by which action, practical action, practical, a practical mindset towards Yahuwah happens. It doesn't happen all at once. There has to be, there's a process. And that process is feeding on his word and putting his word into practical use. If we don't feed upon his word daily, okay? See, remember what Yahushua said, man shall not live. These bones could not live. Man shall not live by bread only, but by what? Every word, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahuwah shall man live. So these bones, which we're going to see what these bones mean, they needed something necessary to help them to live. Let's keep on going. All right. 
from the start of verse 8. It says, And I looked and saw sinews, and flesh came upon them, and skin covered them, but there was no spirit in them. He then said to me, Prophesy to the, to the spirit, prophesy, son of man, and you shall say to the spirit, Thus said the master Yahuwah, Come from the four winds, O spirit, and breathe on these killed ones, so that they live. What? Breathe on what? These just dead ones? No, these killed ones. These, okay, have been killed. They have, their lives have been taken away by someone else. So notice they're on a field. That field would represent a battleground. You see, we are in a state where there are the powers, okay, of this world are killing the people, spiritually speaking. They're losing the battle. The people are losing the battle. We have lost. Most of our people, the Hebrew nation, the Hebrew people have lost they're dead on the battlefield. And they've been dead for a long time. That's why they're presented as dry. The forces of wickedness have knocked them out. Knocked out what? No life, no spirit, no practical righteousness showing forth to the world. They're just dry bones. But that's not the end of the story. That's not the end of this chapter, praise Yahuwah, okay? Because it doesn't end there. Yahuwah has a plan, and we got to follow his plan. All right, let's keep on going. So it says, um, yes, it says, come from the four winds, O spirit, and breathe on these killed ones so that they live. And I prophesied as he commanded me, and the spirit came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet a very great army. Praise Yahuwah. Do you see what's going on? He is preparing an army to do what? To do battle against what? against the powers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. But what do we need? We need Yahuwah's spirit in us. We need Yahuwah's word in us. We need to follow the one who is our captain, that's Yahusha. And he is presented in this chapter too. Praise Yahuwah. Praise we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna see, it. it's all gonna come together. That's beautiful. A great army. <laughs> yes, a great army. You know, the powers of darkness. There's a great army. Yahuwah is raising up a great army to come after and deliver all these slain ones and to bring life to the world. Praise Yahuwah. It goes on. It says, and verse 11, it says, and he said to me, son of man, these bones are all the house of Yisrael. See, they say our bones are dry. Our expectancy has perished and we ourselves have been cut off. It's all we can say without this power of Yahuwah in us. There's no, we're not in the land that Yahuwah promised. We're at the bottom of the bottom. Okay. It's like we're cut off. Therefore, verse 12, therefore prophesy and say, excuse me, therefore prophesy and you shall say to them, thus said the master Yahuwah. See, oh my people, 
I am opening your burial sites. I'm opening, opening up your graves and shall bring you up from your burial sites and shall bring you into the land of Yisrael. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah. When I open your burial sites, my people, and bring you up from your burial sites. See, Yahuwah is going to do something marvelous in the final generation. He is going to raise up a people that are following him. As we read in the scripture reading, okay, what did he say? Verse 26 of, of chapter 36, it says, and I shall give you a new heart and a new spirit within you. Excuse me. I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. That's that life. And I shall take that heart of stone out of your flesh. See, this is a process. It's a process. Righteousness entering the kingdom is not going to just happen just because you are a Hebrew or because you have joined yourself to the people of Yahuwah, the Hebrew people, and embrace the gospel. Well, see, embracing the gospel means embracing the life giver. It goes on, it says, and I shall take the heart of stone. We are we must become participants in this process of new life. We have to let him come in and take that stony heart. He says, lo, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him. I will dine with him and he with me. You see, this is the process. He goes on. And I shall take that heart of stone out of your flesh and I shall give you a heart of flesh, a soft, pliable, a heart that will respond to my spirit and put my spirit within you. And I shall cause you to walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and shall do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. Praise Yahuwah. That's Praise the kingdom. Yahuwah. So. Yahuwah is going to do something, but it's a process. And it requires us to be engaged and participate in that process. Let's continue. All right. So he's going to open up the burial sites. Okay. And give us a new spirit. Verse 14, it says, and I shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall settle you in your own land. And you shall know that I, Yahuwah, have spoken, and I have done it, declares Yahuwah. And the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, And you, son of man, take a stick for yourself and write on it for Yahuda and for the children of Yisrael, his companions. Then take another stick and write on it for Yosef, the stick of Ephraim. And for all the house of Israel, his companions. Then bring them together for yourself into one stick, and they shall become one in your hand. You see, in that day, in the final generation, the people, the Hebrew people, Yahuwah's people, are going to be united. The true followers, the ones who are part of this great army, the ones that are filled with the spirit of Yahuwah will be united in their, that common, that common entity, which is the spirit of Yahuwah in them, causing them to guard his commandments, to follow his instructions, to do what he says to do, and they will be demonstrating it. That's that great army. They'll be de demonstrating it before the entire world. This is what Yahuwah is going to do in the last days. And this is why you have prophecies like Isaiah 60, Isaiah 66, where it talks about the light shining forth from his people. 
and going to all the nations of the world. That's right. It's going to happen. So it, they're going to be united. They're going to be united. All those who are filled with his spirit. And notice the evidence of their unity is they are walking in all his commands. Keep that in mind. That's very, very important. Okay. It goes on. So they're going to be united. Verse 18. And when the children of your people speak to you saying, won't you show us what you mean by these? Say to them, thus said the master Yahuwah, see, I am taking the stick of Yosef, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Yisrael, his companions, and I shall give them unto him with the stick of Yahuda, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. And the sticks on which you write shall be in your hand before their eyes. And speak to them. Thus said the Master Yahuwah, See, I am taking the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and shall gather them from all around, and I shall bring them into their land. A process. See, that land is the, the final stop. That's the kingdom that Yahuwah is going to bring us to. But it's a process. See, we got to wake up. We have to, the, the, the ligaments and tendons need to come upon us. The spirit of Yahuwah has to come upon us. We need to be practical demonstrators of the word of Yahuwah, even as David demonstrated. David, what David are you talking about? Well, the David in this chapter, not King David, but this David, you'll see in just a minute. Dawood. Okay, Dawood, yes, I, the one that is mentioned here. We're gonna we're gonna run into that, but we need to follow Dawood, okay, and we're gonna see why. It says it goes on. It says, <clears throat> um, so they're gonna you know he's gonna bring these sticks together. They're gonna be united, okay. The and it says in verse I'm gonna read um. He says he'll bring them into their land. That's the, that's the final stop, okay? Verse 22, And I shall make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel, and one sovereign shall be sovereign over them all. And let them no longer be two nations, and let them no longer be divided into two reigns. Remember how the... Israel was divided, and then it says right here that he's going to unite them and put one sovereign over them. Who is the sovereign? Well, let's see. And verse 23, and they shall no longer defile themselves with their idols, nor with their di disgusting matters, nor with any of their transgressions. And I shall save them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned. And I shall cleanse them, and they shall be my people, and I be their Elohim. While Dawood, my servant, is sovereign over them. Praise Yahuwah. This is a clear reference to none other than Yahusha. Yahusha, the sovereign. He is the true Dawood. What does Dawood mean? It means beloved, the beloved one. You see, who out of all the sons of Israel, out of all the seed of Adam, was most beloved of the father? By demonstration, there is none other than Yahusha. None other. He is most beloved. Many have had names like Dawood, 
Many have had names like Yeshayahu. Many have had names like Yahusha. Many of the sons of Yisrael. But there's only one who fully demonstrated those names to the T. And that's the son of Yahuwah, who Yahuwah brought into this world to save all Yisrael, all the sinners of this world who turn back to him. Praise Yahuwah. Praise so this is the sovereign. It's Yahusha. The, he's called here Daud. Okay. He says, verse 24, while Daud, my servant, is sovereign over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. Yahusha, Daud is that one shepherd. And walk in my right rulings and guard my laws and shall do them. You see, it's always a practical experience. The reign of the kingdom, the, the reign of the of Yahuwah is going to be filled with people who are doers of his word, not just hearers. They're not just going to hear, they're doing it. And they love the word of Yahuwah. That's right. Verse 25, and they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Yaakov, my servant, where your fathers dwelt, and they shall dwell in it, they and their children, and their children's children forever. Hmm. Praise Yahuwah. It's not going to end. That's why it says that a man, a righteous man, will become a mighty nation. You see, that's that's the word of Yahuwah. Children's children's children. It goes on forever. They will not bring forth for trouble. They will bring forth a righteous seed. All, every person upon the face of the earth who unites themselves with Yahuwah in a practical covenant of doing his will. See, this is why the scripture says in Joel, Joel chapter 2, the end of chapter 2, where it talks about his spirit coming upon his people, even his servants, okay? And that spirit, you know, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your, your old men shall, shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And it says, whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Those who call upon him in, in sincerity and in truth, who follow his way. You see, we got to take the whole scripture together. It's just not saying just the name of Yahuwah. When we call upon the name of Yahuwah, we are embracing all that Yahuwah has given to us for salvation. And that is, as it says right here, following his, his instructions, putting your trust in his servant, that sovereign, Dawood, the beloved one, Yahusha who was sent for our salvation. Let's wrap it up. So it says, um, in verse 25, it says, And they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Yaakov, my servant, where your fathers dwell. And they shall dwell in it, they and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant Dawood be their prince forever. And I shall make a covenant of peace with them, an everlasting covenant. It is with them. And I shall place them and increase them and shall place my set-apart place in their midst forever. And my dwelling place shall be over them. And I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And the nations shall know that I, Yahuwah, am setting Yisrael apart when my set-apart place is in their midst forever. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. You see, Yahuwah 
has a plan for you. He has a plan for me. And that plan is to put our complete trust, put our complete trust in his word of truth and walk in that word. The time is coming. And I believe that it may be very near when that the spirit of Yahuwah is going to go across this world. And those who are responsive, who are responding, those, his people, his Hebrew people, his depressed and, and downtrodden people are going to rise up a mighty nation and they're going to testify. They're going to be united in following his commands, his word of instruction. And they're going to have one sovereign. There's one sovereign over them. That's Yahusha. That he's the sovereign. He's the king of kings, the master of masters that will reign over his people. But he has to reign over us now. In this life, it's practical, practical righteousness, practical alahimliness that we must put on. And when we do, it's going to turn this world upside down. People are going to see and are going to come. And they're going to say, show us the way. Show me the way to Yahuwah. So praise Yahuwah. May Yahuwah bless you as you continue to study his word and make it a part of your life from day to day. Praise Yahuwah.